regreso aquí en Auto 060 eh, después de esa entrevista sobre el nuevo Infinity Q50 del 2014 que fuimos a manejar por Boston. Vamos a cambiar totalmente de tema. Eh, vamos a hablar ahora de la seguridad, de la tecnología, de los peligros que tienen las personas de la tercera edad eh, cuando están al volante y cómo eh, es un problema muy serio porque no solamente es el peligro como tal que tienen cuando manejan, sino la falta de leyes, la falta de, de reglamentos claros que existen en este país para... Eh, determinar cuándo es el momento apropiado para que una persona deje de manejar algo bastante complicado porque las personas de la tercera edad a veces son solamente eh, eh, tienen el auto como el recurso para seguir viviendo, para salir, para a veces de, eh, eh, de cumplir con sus necesidades de, de ir a comprar alimentos, de visitar familiares, de ir al doctor, así que para esto vamos a hablar con Sharon Silke Karish, es la, ella es la directora ejecutiva de AOL Autos, así que vamos a cambiar al inglés para hablar con Sharon Silke Cardi, Executive Editor at AOL Autos, to talk about the danger of elderly drivers on the road. So now we are with uh, Sharon, um, Executive uh, uh, Editor at AOL Autos, and uh, talking about a very important topic about uh, danger of elderly drivers on the road. How are you, Sharon? I'm doing great. How are you, Javier? Very good, thank you. Uh, very interesting topic, especially because not only the number of uh, elderly uh, drivers is, is increasing, but uh, at the same time, a lot of new technologies in cars are like probably making people feeling safer in the, in the, on the road when we are not really. What, what's what's, what's the, the news on this? Well, I mean, yeah, the number of elderly drivers is increasing dramatically. I think we're going to have, I think the statistic is that there will be um, For the next 20 years, um, every day there'll be another 19,000 people um, having their birthday and becoming senior citizens. You know, for the next 20 years, I mean, it's, it's, there's going to be a huge increase in uh, elderly drivers. And right now, um, there's no comprehensive way to figure out which people are okay on the road and which people may be like losing some of their facilities and might be a danger. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough issue for states to tackle because um, the senior citizen population is often like the most active voting population and nobody wants to be seen as um, biased against older people um, and clearly not every older person is a bad driver but sometimes it happens where people are like losing their ability and yet they're still driving and so it's, it's definitely a concern um, and, and really not much is being done. Yeah, uh, what caught my attention uh, while, while I was searching for uh, for the show was a story you wrote about uh, the, the 10 year anniversary of a really bad accident that happened in uh, California where 10 people died and uh, 63 were injured. Uh, and as you say, I mean, in this case was an 80 year old uh, driver, right? Um, and, and it's so. He 80, yeah, he was 86. His name was George Russell, Russell Weller, and he was um, driving in Santa Monica and something happened and he hit the accelerator instead of the brake and he drove for two and a half full blocks through a farmer's market um, and people said that that his demeanor at the time that he was like gripping the wheel and staring straight ahead and sort of unaware of his surroundings um, and he killed 10 people and seriously injured 63 others yeah very very dangerous i think i have walked through that uh where that place where that happened in santa monica there's a lot of uh driving events in, in California, so I think I've been in that sa uh, scene. Um, so you were mentioning there's not really any rules anywhere, right? And, uh, and, and most people have to self-regulate themselves or maybe the, the children of the elder people should do it or what, what, what's the recommendation in general for this? Yeah, in some states you have to come in um, like after 70 years old when you're going to renew your license, you have to actually show up. And take a vision test. Um, and the thought is, I guess, that, you know, if you're not with it enough that the DMV folks can then, you know, uh, realize that because you're there and, you know, maybe they can take some steps. Um, but it's really, you know, it's really based on a vision test. And there's no really good screening options right now. There's no, like, one good computerized test or driving test or something that can kind of screen out for all the issues. Um, So, yeah, you're really relying on doctors, family members, um, and the elderly themselves to really realize when it's time to hang up the keys and um, start relying on other alternative modes of transportation. But then there's, that's an issue as well because, you know, a lot of folks 
don't have alternative forms of transportation. Yeah. We're a very suburban and rural country, um, so and there's not a lot of public transportation. So that's another challenge. Yeah. Any opinion of all these new technologies in cars? Uh, not only, I mean, the the, the um, tele smartphones that we all have, but like the, the technology in, in the cars themselves. Like, I mean, very high-end cars obviously have like really incredible technology. I just drove the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class and basically drives itself. When you consider you're going into tra heavy traffic most of the time nowadays. Uh, any, any any idea, any opinion on, on how this new technology is affecting this uh, this issue? Well, you know, it's right now, like you said, it's in a lot of the luxury cars, so I don't know that this is sort of an answer right now, but I do think that um, in the coming years it's going to start coming into, um, you know, it's going to become more democratized and it'll be cheaper for people to buy. But I think it's a great solution. I mean, Ford has um, the MyKey, yeah. which they use for keen drivers, which you can set that key so that, you know, you can't turn the radio up and unless you, you can't turn the radio on at all unless you're buckled. Um, you know, it, it, it puts a seat cap on the car. Um, and also, if you have adaptive cruise control in the car, it, it, you can opt to have the adaptive cruise control turn on all the time. And the adaptive cruise control um, will keep you a certain distance from the car that's in front of you, no matter what. So, like, it'll stop you from hitting the car in front of you. Um, and I think that, that like, stuff like that, those kinds of techno technological solutions make a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, it's because um, it, 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 it's just, uh, it's a backup, you know? I mean, it's not, so not going to stop sort of the people driving through um, a, a farmer's market or someone driving the wrong way down the road, which you've seen examples of that with other drivers as well. Um, and it's not going to stop people hitting the gas pedal when they need to hit the brake. But it is like a little bit of an insurance policy that, you know, if something dramatic is going to happen, that the car has enough of its own sort of sense of the road and where it should be, that it will take um, precaution and and stop itself before, you know, anything really terrible can happen. Yeah, and for now, I guess it's people just to pay attention if they have elderly drivers in their family or like neighbors or whatever, and maybe just pay a little more attention, right? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things to look for is, um, is your parent or, you know, the person that you're caring for, are they getting more citations? So have they started getting, like, tickets for running stop signs or running red lights or, you know, driving too slowly or driving too fast? Um, look and make sure, you know, if their car is starting to get dinged up more in parking lots, it's probably a sign that they're losing some of that spatial ability and they might be hitting other cars or hitting um, shopping carts. Um, and just, I think the temptation, I, do, I know we do this with uh, my, my mom and my mother-in-law, that when they come visit us, we, we are the ones who drive, but we drive everywhere. Yeah. Um, that's the temptation, you know, but you do actually have to get in the car and let your parents um, drive, because you have to be able to see if they're capable of doing it. Yeah, sort of, so, test, sort of testing them a little bit, right? Yeah, just, you know, just to see. Yeah. Um, and if you don't feel safe, it's time to have that conversation. Exactly. A lot of people, a lot of people don't have that conversation. They don't know how to tell their parents, but it's time to start the conversation. It's not going to be an easy one, um, but it is time to start talking about it. Yeah, very interesting. Sharon Carty, executive editor at AOLados.com. Uh, Sharon, what other uh, big topics are trending in your site uh, these days? Oh, we've been learning a lot about uh, airbags because airbag recalls have been up dramatically this year. Um, so we've been doing some work on that. And um, in early September, we'll have uh, we'll have some stuff on teen driving and teen driving safety. Um, so, you know, kind of timed in with the school, back to school driving. So if you guys want to check that out, it would be great. Excellent. AOLoutos.com, right? That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Have a good day. Thank you, too. Bye. Pues muy interesante el tema con Sharon Silke Cardi, la directora ejecutiva, la editora ejecutiva de AOLautos.com, donde estábamos hablando sobre el tema de cuándo es el momento adecuado para decirle a las personas de la tercera edad, a los abuelos, a los padres, cuándo es el momento en que ya el conducir se, te, se convierte más en un peligro que en una, en una cuestión que facilita la vida. Eh, como decíamos ahí, eh, está aumentando dramáticamente el número de personas de la tercera edad, personas de más de 70 años que están manejando. En el 2011 se calculaba...
que había 28 eh, millones de personas eh, de más de 70 años que manejaban en Estados Unidos eh, y para el 2030 se calcula que serán 52.7 millones de personas de más de 70 años que estarán haciéndolo manejando en Estados Unidos por las calles y carreteras eh, y entonces esto se convierte en un problema serio porque como decíamos no hay leyes, no hay regulaciones, no hay un momento específico en que se le puede decir a la persona, bueno, no puedes manejar más, eh, depende de cada persona, hay personas de 70 años que están en mejor condición que DJ Cafa que está ahí en la cabina durmiéndose y él tiene, no cumple, creo que 30 todavía a veces, eh, pero fuera de broma, eh, es un problema serio, las distracciones, eh, pero también la capacidad física de por lo menos, eh, de, por ejemplo, eh, ver las señales en las carreteras, de ver los instrumentos dentro de los autos. Eh, donde cada vez hay más tecnología, hablábamos antes de vehículos como el nuevo Q50 Infinity eh, 2014 que está lleno de tecnología y por supuesto hay que leerla, hay que estar pendiente de las pantallas, de los paneles de instrumentos y ver exactamente qué es lo que está pasando con el vehículo y entonces ver lo que sucede, así que interesante, vean ese reporte ahí en facebook.com slash auto 060, hemos colocado el link para que lean la historia y cuando regresemos aquí en auto 060, uno de mis temas favoritos el fútbol y los autos con el Volkswagen, el programa de Volkswagen Junior Master. Ya regresamos, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.